friends and welcome to another episode of Sequin Girly Creates. Today's episode is a Friday shows. I know I don't do them very often but I thought I'd do one today because tomorrow is my uh, part of the vlog tour of A Gift to November. Thank you to So Like Dotty and Adam Sows who've organised it. There's been loads of amazing vloggers taking part. If you haven't had a look, there's some really useful and inspirational um, vlogs out there helping you think about things that you want to make for others. And to be honest, not just for Christmas, there's things that you could use year round for other festivals and festivities, etc. And my part is coming up tomorrow. So I thought I'd do a Friday's. Excuse me, I thought I'd do a Friday so I'll start with what I'm wearing. I didn't make it, I wish I had. It's a jumper I've had for a few years already to wear. As classic though, when you buy it when I buy shop made, look how much too long it is for me. Right, let's start with a uh, small channel shout out. Yeah, sorry about that. I lost one of my earrings. These earrings are by um Jericho Bow. They are a local business not far from me. I've bought them at the Oxford Market before that you can find them online and they've got their own website. I love them. So, small channel shout out. This week I am giving a shout out to So Chi Designs. I'll put the link below. She's got a great selection of uh, vlogs and videos for you to watch. Lots of ideas. And she also takes part in Friday Sews as well. So you may have seen her already. But I thought that was a great little shout out. Someone different. And it looks to me like she's not based in the UK. Which is nice to have that variety sometimes. So there we go. So next let me tell you I won a prize. Now this one I think came from Sew Up Cycle I think. Um, you saw my frantic sewing for Sew Up Cycle and uh, my prize was a voucher for Sew Essential. Now I was pretty sensible, essential with my choice of, of, of prize item. So first of all I went for some sewing machine oil. I have been, whoa, look how I go in the dark when that comes on. Um, I have been looking up about my Janome or Genome sewing machine and there's this whole myth around how they shouldn't be oiled. And to an extent they don't need oiling because I was reading, and I'm sorry if this is boring, but I find it interesting. They have oil releasing bearings so as the motion happens it warms up the lubricant and it sort of lubricates everything and when it cools down it goes solid however in the I've had mine 16 years so in the bobbing casing you can put a little drop of oil below on like the bit to stop it squeaking as it's mo rotating it says because they're top loading rather than front they need less oiling and also you can put a little drop on the moving parts if they look very dry when you've been using it for a bit and have a look we don't want to be oiling everywhere and everything but any kind of sort of machine that has moving parts at some point should need a bit of lubrication and I read about someone who owns the same machine as me and actually it had almost seized up and when it was serviced it was running like new well the only one of the only things it's only really two things you can do with the service is clean it and oil it so I'm gonna give mine a clean and a little drop of oil won't need much and also I've got to keep an arm my overlocker as well then I got myself something which I've mentioned before that I didn't have which was a curve so now I've got this nice French curve bit here I went for this and all of these here this is a very reasonably priced one some of them are very expensive aren't they but I went for this because I really liked the variety of options it had got on so it's got an armhole curve hip curve front neck line and back neck line that gives advice on how to use them for that and that there's all these sort of instruction panels on the back then I got them very glamorous but very useful bias binding um you know I love this for adding detail and again I'm sure you will be impressed with my practicality here some black and white invisible like hidden concealed zips I decided to go for these items because it was a great price, £25, but actually it can be easy to get distracted and I really, these are practical, useful things that I, I need, so that's what I decided to do with them. Sorry, it's not super glamorous. Um, so, 
most of this week's sewing has been things for other people and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I have been working on, let me see if I can pick it up, this bit of fabric. It is now cut out and I'll tell you what I decided to do. So I have this pattern which I found in a charity shop which I believe was free in a magazine m m many years ago. This is a Tilly and the Buttons Nora cardigan which I think when I looked it up started life as a um, jumper pattern. Tilly herself then hacked it and then offered the now you can buy the cardigan part as an add-on to the pattern. So I got this anyway, as I say, I got it in Oxfam for £2.99. I've sewn it up as a cardigan. Um, there was definitely adjustments I would make again as a cardigan. But for this sort of coatigan, I liked the shape of the front and the sleeves and the bodice. But what I decided I wanted was like an outer collar of this fluffy material as well. Now I had a search and I did look to see if there was a pattern I could find with what I wanted but I couldn't really find what I wanted and also you know me I try not to buy new patterns unless I really can avoid it but what I decided to do was there is a piece where is it here which is the inside facing let's get it out the right way yeah so this is the facing piece that goes like folds inside the cardigan so that you've got like the bit in I realized that meant I'd got the right shape for the front there of the bodice so I thought if I trace that line and draw a bigger shape here, I can make an outer collar and then cut an under collar in a thin fabric and then still cut my facing piece. So I can use what I learned from the Paula workwear jacket, free from Fabric Store. I, you'd think I was sponsored by Fabric Store the amount of times I mention it. But I thought I could then create like, um, like a wider shape here and tailor it down. I'm gonna put a picture in here of something I saw that sort of inspired my thinking and um, then I thought what would my under collar be and I remembered that very sensibly earlier in the year I bought this red sort of it's kind of viscous linen I want to say yeah and um, I wasn't sure that so much useful but this will be perfect for the under collar and the the, the facing so I'm going to cut those pieces out of that and, as I say, shape a collar on the top. So I will update you when I've done that. But all of that has paused because I wanted to get on with my sewing gifts. First of all, it is a gift to November, as I've already mentioned. But secondly, because I don't like a panic. Normally, by this time of year, I'm well on my way with my gifts. I'm, I'm behind from my perspective. I like to buy and make what I want rather than what the shops tell me to. So the fact that I haven't got as far as I like is it's it's not a stress for me but it's a problem because I want to get on with it now so I have so I paused my sewing even though my mind is full of ideas to think of others so I actually sat down the other night I'll pop a little video in. I popped a video at the beginning of me sort of getting cozy and I used my project plan sheets. Now this is going to be impossible, so I'll put it up on the screen. My project plan sheets that are free if you want one. You can go to my Kofi account where they're downloadable for free. And actually, I sat down with my lovely felt tip pens and I made some project plans. So I will put decent pictures in here of them. So I did one for family. And I thought about people in my family and what I wanted to make for them. There, so I put little sketches and drawings in. Oh, that's just crazy, isn't it? Right. Okay. Family-wise, thinking about what I'd like to make for people. So I sort of jotted down my ideas around it, little sketches and so on. So like for nieces and nephews, I'm going to make book cushions, which I'll talk more about in my Gift of November tomorrow. And I actually saw some fleece blankets for those because it was cheaper than buying the fabric so that's my tip for today for you is if you're looking for character fabric so I was looking for Mario and Pokemon they're quite expensive as fabrics it's because of the license but I actually got a big fleece blanket uh, with Mario characters on it and a big fleece blanket with Pokemon characters on it and they were something like nine pound each and they were one meter by one and a half meters or something I'll show you them in my next vlog but I can get way more than a book cushion each for the children out of those I'm thinking about like some fingerless gloves or hats and things as well 
and then I did a plan for my stepdaughter and on hers again I don't know if you can see them let's get rid of that light a minute can you see yes look sketches of what I want to do and notes and ideas that's better isn't it now you can see me but that was easy to see so I was jotting down like the colour combos what patterns I wanted what I wanted them to look like and I actually really enjoyed the planning process because even though these are presents I still want to enjoy my hobby and then my other half hope you're not watching uh, I'll do that again because that works is not it so here we go so a little sketch there Yes, I'm making him, as I mentioned, an Udi. I know that's a brand. Some other sketchy bits up there and so on. Um, there we go, that worked, didn't it? That was good. So um, I wanted to start on those and I have. Hmm. Fluff. Keeping the hoover around. Oh my goodness. I will pop below a great video of a vlog I found. Let me write this down so I don't forget because that's the thing I noticed I forget. Um a great video on how to do an Udi and because we have one in our house already I was able to trace that and use that. I've only bought the pocket upstairs, the fluff. Last night when I was cutting it all out I could feel like it irritating my eyes. Now I am not an allergy hay fevery person I'm very blessed with but oh my goodness my eyes were like dry and scratchy and things. I felt like I could feel it in the back of my throat so um this is the pocket like the kangaroo pouch to go on the front this is unbelievably soft so i've cut out all the pieces of the outer and inner i decided to do this in the lining because it's so soft when your hands are inside the sherpa i got for the main body is not that soft so i've done a different one in the hood and it's all cut out so far i've stitched the shoulders and the arms in and i'm going to stitch this on the front next before i stitch the arms and the body together and then do the same again for the lining and I've it's got really good instruction on how to do the hood and how to do the cuffs on the sleeves without any seams being shown it was amazing this vlog I found um what was I gonna say I was gonna say something I learned something about my overlooker from this which is you can release the pressure of the foot because obviously this was a lot of fabric going through the overlock and I wanted to overlock as much as I could to stop any more fluff flying off um, and there's a little black dial on the top and if you turn it clockwise it lifts the, the, the pressure up a bit and you turn it anti-clockwise and it goes down if your fab fabric's thin you shouldn't need to do it very often but when I've got a lot of these going through I can so if you've got a Janome overlocker or haven't look it up because it's worth it because what it was doing was was skewing the fabric where it was too tight um and then i've also been working on his uh jumper as well this is a fabric i think i showed it to you it's crocodiles um that is from pound fabrics it's amazing look and it's fleece backed oh my goodness it's so soft i saw a really interesting vlog the other day saying that that sewing is a sensory experience and this was very true so there's the kangaroo pocket and i have made this jumper i looked at a pattern i had didn't think it worked well so i snuck a jumper out of his drawer and traced it so we're looking like this so far um so we're about the same place on that as well i'm going to put a hood in but what i've decided to do is cut two hoods out of the this fabric and then the inner one to do it the wrong way around so you've got that by your face on the inside i think I haven't 100 inside but that's what i'm thinking and for the hood instructions I was looking at how to do it in the Tilly and the Button stretch book um, because obviously there's the Stella one in there with the hood so I was just looking for advice on how to sew the hood because I know Agatha in Agatha's uh, cottage is it? Agatha you talked to me a lot and I forgot on your vlog name I'll put it below she said she's a hood expert so if I get stuck I know who I'm gonna call um, so that's where I am. I've got a long way to go with my plans, but I feel like I know what direction I'm going in. And I just like, I sewed in my lunch break today. I used to sew a lot in the mornings in the summer. Not working for me at the moment, to be honest, but you just don't know how you're feeling, do you? Um, that leads me on to something that I wanted to say, actually. Now, um, I know I'm bright and colourful, but I don't know how everyone else feels, but... 
you won't get like an overload of like Christmassy content for me. You might get like sparkly outfits or something because I just like brightness and colour. But I'm 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 an interesting one about Christmas. I used to be a teacher and I never used to feel festive until we broke up from school, which I know must sound weird when you think that there was like nativity shows and Christmas carols and 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 Christmas fairs but because it was my job I was just on like this conveyor about to get to the end and I would suddenly go and relax and then I would feel festive and I always used to struggle a bit with the fact that I didn't feel festive when it was all around me that didn't mean I didn't bring the festive joy to others I just didn't feel it inside myself and then I was having a chat with my hairdresser the other day and she said she struggles with Christmas and we were talking about the fact that it has a lot of pressure on it, doesn't it? Like this, this poor event. It's it's expected to perform, to be really good, for everyone to enjoy it. And, and, and I took that pressure off myself years ago. So for me, the way I get my enjoyment out of it is thinking about what I want to do for other people. So from making cards to... Um, like cooking traditions that we have in our family to that like I set up in my little family to what I make or choose for other people I some years I decorate the house quite late some years quite early just depends on how I feel I do love a light outside the house because I think it makes me smile when I come home in the dark and the lights are on and I think it does other people as well but it's a bit of a weird odd one because people might think I am by the fact that normally I'm shopping in October but that's about preparation rather than than anything else. I've managed to organise with Agatha um, a vlogmas tour to take pressure off a lot of vloggers so they're not needing to do it every day and I think it's amazing that some people do and I have a lot of respect for them for that but it's not for me. Uh, lovely Christine and I are doing a little um I'd think thing together and actually the excitement again for me there is choosing what to give her um just letting you know that this is a bit of a safe space if you are someone who has mixed feelings about the festive season very welcome to share them with me or just to know that I'm not going to be going on and on and on about it here because it's just how I feel details blog is up so thank you to those of you who requested uh, how to do the piping how to do the ruffle that's gone up i'll put the funny thing here and link it below i've had some lovely comments on it but youtube is not showing it to many people so if you could help me with that i'd be really grateful i put a lot of love and care into that vlog and youtube doesn't seem to want to show it to many people Next weekend's going to be super busy. On the Saturday, we're off on a shopping trip to JB Fabrics in Slough. We'll be there at 10am on the 25th of November. If you want to let me know you're coming, even if it's like the night before or on the morning, because they're going to help us arrange for parking. And I'm trying to look if there's somewhere we can go for like a coffee and cake afterwards. So do let me know if you want to come. As I say, even if you don't decide till the morning of the day that you want to come um also got the virtual social next sunday the 26th if you want to come to that there's a couple of places left and that's from 1 p.m to 6 p.m it's pay what you can so you don't have to come to the whole thing whatever you like but it's very easy going no expectations to have your camera on or to talk if you want to let me know anything in advance or if you get stuck or anything don't worry no stress it's just you could even pretend we're just your own personal podcast that you're listening to things i've got that i'm planning um i am getting right into the snuggly zone anyway i think i can hack that now into like a collared jumper so watch this space and i did treat myself treat yourself if you know what that is and i'll just bring my mug across for a minute then you're certainly in my tribe answers below if you know what that's from and treat yourself um so anyway i treat myself to the stella sweatshirt from fiber mood because fiber mood had an offer on and uh it's a bat wing jumper some of you know how much i love 80s styling and um 
I was a child of the 80s. It's weird that I love it so much. But maybe it's because I wasn't a teenager. I didn't get... I was a teenager at the end of the 80s, but at the beginning I was a child being dressed with what my parents chose. Um, And so... um, Batwing, I'm going to give it a good go. It's got really interesting like sleeve insert here. So I've been doing that classic, have a look on Insta. And someone put an amazing bit of Liberty fabric in here on the ends of the sleeves. I'll put the picture in here. And um, I'm going to give that a go and a couple of other jumpers. That's on my list once I've finished making jumpers and things for other people. it's. I think November is a jumper month, isn't it? Um but that's kind of it for plans. I want to keep going with um, creating things for other people. I was watching Catherine Sews today. I'll put her link below. I'm writing this down as well. I never think of these things till I start talking to you lovely people. Um, and she made some mittens and a beret out of a jumper. Now, if you saw my uh, pumpkin upcycle, that was out of old jumpers. I've got some left over and I love the fact that she used like this, the collar of the jumper to make the beret band. Can you imagine this as a beret? Mustn't cut this up, I love this jumper. But what a great use of jumpers to make like colourful berets, beanies, mittens. So I'm going back in the loft, getting out my pumpkin making pieces and I'm going to make a couple of sort of beanies and things like that for people as well, I think. And look, there will be free patterns out there or again I can just grab one I've got and trace it and hack it about a bit I just love doing that really because no one knows if it goes wrong you just use it as a bit of stuffing or use it as a as a rag just remember that uh, so I thought I'd do something different this time because it's not going to be a hugely long one today things I'm watching so I've been watching two things at the moment, alongside all the lovely YouTube videos that you hear me talking about and things. I have started watching the new season of The Crown. I find it a relaxing watch because it's not, there's no peril to it because I know what happens. So I quite, I find it quite interesting how they retell the version. I know it's not true. I don't think I'm watching something that's true, but I like the retelling and the perspective they give. And I love seeing uh, Diana's clothes in there as well, Princess Diana's clothes. They, they, they're very, their costumes are very faithful to the time and sometimes exactly to what people wore. And the other thing I'm watching is on BBC iPlayer. Now, for my American followers and my Australian followers, I don't know if you get these because I know you get BBC America, but this is something called Uncanny. So I don't know. It is a podcast, so I would imagine you can listen to the podcast so it started life as a podcast called Uncanny and now there's been a little TV series which I think there'll be more of. And think about like ghost hunters and then think about someone being sensible. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it. So the guy's name's Danny I think and um, I could tell you what his jumpers were but I couldn't tell you his name, my brain. Um, so he takes um, an experience, a real experience that someone's had and he looks, he calls them team believers and team sceptic. He doesn't ever say what he thinks. He doesn't, he doesn't do like the ghost hunter visit the property or anything like that. But he does investigate like some of the incidents using like either the sceptical point of view, science or the other point of view. And there was a really interesting one about time slips. So this lady was talking about an experience she had growing up in a house. And one of the things they talked about was the possibility that something that happened might have been a time slip. And then he went on to talk about a time slip that had happened in the 70s in Liverpool. And then in the podcast, so that was on the TV show, in the podcast, they were talking about other time slips. In a different episode, they were talking about something called mass hysteria, which is a known phenomenon. And they talked about the mass hysteria where hundreds of girls in, in the 1960s, I think it was, were fainting. So I then went on a little internet explore looking up mass hysteria cases. So what he does is he listens to a person who often is not a believer in ghosts or whatever they talk about what they've experienced he unpicks it with them he talks to these experts i say that because it depends what you view as an expert one of the people is always like a let's give a science answer to this and the other person's a bit more open-minded and they leave you to decide and he also is on social media so you can like 
put your questions and thoughts in. Another interesting one was talking about infrasound, which I found super interesting as well, which is a real science thing. And so I would say if you're curious, if you are interested in what is or isn't happening and you like a bit of science too, or you love a bit of that sort of like real lifey type thing, highly recommend it. I think it's incredibly well done um, compared to some of the things we've had in the past of that sort of genre. But that's my two things I'm watching this week. I will catch you tomorrow in my gift for November. And then next week, I'm bringing you the vlog looking at the price of my sewing versus the price of the clothes that I would buy if I didn't sew right now. So that I've been working on that. And then next weekend's going to be super busy. So looking at my chalk planner here of everything I've been planning, I'm going to do a Friday sews again next week as well because it's the only way I can see how to fit it in. And I'm planning a week in the life vlog because I thought I'd take you on the shopping trip if you can't come. I'd bring you along to a bit of the, the virtual social and the real one because I've got a lot going on. And I'll just show you some of my life just on those days where how do I squeeze sewing in amongst working full time. So I'm planning that and so you'll have to wait till the beginning of December to see that. But I'll just do you a week in my life. We may or may not put some decorations up there. And if we do, I'll bring you along because, as I say, I do like an outdoor deck. Um, so I'll bring you along and you can just have a nosy at what I get up to and how I squeeze and plan my sewing in around working. Hope you have a great weekend and I will catch you soon. <laughs>